Hey everyone, just popping in here. I was recently nominated for an AVN award um, for favorite adult podcast, and I'd really appreciate your vote. So if you can go to avn.com slash awards slash voting, you can cast your vote up to once per day up until January 7th. I'd really appreciate your support and thank you so much for all the support along the way. Thanks. Are you a sex worker looking to build a new website or a website redesign? Then you'll want to consider Fox Digital. They did a fantastic job designing my website, Stripped by Sia. If you want your website done, mention that you're a listener of the show at foxdigital.design for 20% off. Tell them I sent you. Everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stripped by Sia, your podcast for strippers, sex workers, and all the fancy naked people in between. I am your host, Steph Sia, aka Kimchi, on stage, still taking a little bit of a break. We're going into the holidays um, pretty soon, so I just wanted to spend some time with family and friends, eat all the things, and then work out really hard uh, after the holidays, and then get back on that stage again in January. So stay tuned. Uh, I know. A couple of you have been inquiring, but um, you can catch me online um, on my OnlyFans. I'm also now streaming live on Streammate every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can catch me there doing some naked cooking and baking and other things that I feel like. And yeah, come, come chat with me on there. I love to hang out. And last but not least, um, I was a sugar baby for a long time. I chat about those experiences in my earlier episodes and bonus content um, in season one if you want to learn more about me. But the show isn't about me. This show is all about sex work, all about the sex and adult industry, and my own way of trying to destigmatize it by having these conversations week by week with different guests on the show who tell us about their lived experiences, what their realities are, and not just the people that are in front of the camera, but also people behind the scenes, um, people that are allies, nonprofit organizations, people that want to help support sex workers. Because as you know, our work is highly stigmatized, um, very much looked down upon, still taboo in many places in the world. So I'm really just trying to do this podcast to educate people and to learn more about the industry. And yeah, including this week's guest, which we'll soon tell you about, which I'm so excited for. But in the meantime, I just want to say a quick hello to the Patreon subscribers. Uh, Hello. If you did not know, I do have a Patreon and that is how I pretty much fund the show um, all, to all you lovely people subscribing from all over the world. Um, you do get some fan recognition shout outs on the show if you're in the second and top tier. So I just want to say a quick hello to some of our subscribers that are on there. So hello to the local peeps. We have Jay Sunsern. We have Rip Sarkar. Hello, hello. Uh, not so local because you're just below us in Washington. Justin Erickson, thanks so much for supporting pretty much from day one um going a bit further we have snoo snoo that's all the way from germany and we also have selena money and ted mcguire from locations that are unknown but thank you so much for subscribing um supporting the show funding the website that is now up it's stripped by sia.com and if you are interested in becoming a patron it's really easy it's as low as four dollars um a month it's really really cheap and um it is patreon.com slash stripped by Sia. You can find out more information there where your money goes along with bonus content, uh, video exclusive content that you can find only there and lots, lots more. So be sure to check it out. Patreon.com slash stripped by Sia. And last but not least, or last couple things I want to say here too, shout out to Skyhawk after dark dot, um, Skyhawk after dark TV.com. It is the adult network that I'm a part of that has a lot of different video casts as well as adult related podcasts that are on there. Um, I would love for you to help check them out, support my fellow colleagues that are on there who are also doing their thing and hustling. So be sure to check it out. Skyhawk after dark TV. And last but not least for realsies, 
Um, Fox Digital is my new partner here. They are the ones that built my website. And for all Stripped by Seal listeners, you can get 20% off there. Uh, just go ahead and message Anthony at foxdigital.sign and he can help you out with whatever you need. Okay. <laughs> finally done that spiel and getting and getting it shorter and shorter which is nice um but uh if you have skipped welcome hello i am very excited to bring on this week's guest on a topic that i've never talked about before on a topic that i don't know much about but i am now invested and also just really curious to learn more about the art of pompoir if you've never heard of that it's not a poopery it's not like a fancy french word <laughs> or something like that. It's actually an ancient technique, um, which is the squeezing of vaginal muscles to stimulate the penis. And why does this matter? Why is this of interest? Well, it turns out a lot of you listeners out there actually know already know what pompoir is. And maybe a lot of you listeners don't actually know what that is. But a lot of you, at least on Twitter and Instagram, were really keen and really curious to to hear about this episode because obviously, especially in full service work, this can definitely help you out, maybe blow your clients away. But even if you don't, um, if you aren't in sex work on, on that side of the scale there, maybe you want to spice things up at home as well. Um, I know I need to start <laughs> like going down um, these techniques and also just learning more about it too because I love sex. <laughs> and I love also amazing orgasms as well. So I thought it'd be really, really great to bring on this week's guest who goes by the name of Belle de Lorenzo. And she's a founder of goddess.com. And that there is an online step-by-step -step course, aka known as Olympus program, on this very topic. It's on the secret art of pompoir. So I want you to stick around to the end of the show because there's a lot of great goodies that are to be had for a strip by seal listeners. So stay tuned. And because our guest has been waiting so patiently for the past six minutes, and I'm talking a lot, and she's about to talk a lot for the next hour. Say hello to Belle Di Lorenzo. Hey. hey, hey, Steph. Hello. I'm so, so happy to be here. And don't worry, I hope you get to talk a little bit more because I'm, uh, once I get going, it's really annoying. <laughs> it becomes a lot. <laughs> so please feel free really to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> that's nonsense honestly like i love guests that talk a lot and the ones that are super passionate as you are about this particular topic today which is pompoir and i'm super stoked because as mentioned before like i'm actually not super familiar with the art of pompoir but you came to me and i was like really intrigued i'm like what is this i had so many questions i'm like what is this about but now you're finally here you're going to be talking about it and telling us all about it but before we kind of get into the meat and bones of it all um i kind of like googled you and found a couple things and that's what i used as your intro but i would love for you to maybe tell the audience who you are in your own words and terms and go yeah, I mean that's that's perfect. I'm I'm the founder of, of goddess.com. That's goddess with an H after the O. Um and uh that's I'm, I'm mostly a nerd. That's that's what you're gonna figure out really soon in this podcast because I get really into the science of things and yes, if, if someone can get can make sex really unsexy, it's very much me. So I'm really happy to share this with the world who will make the this extremely sexy again. So <laughs> I, I, I love I love that uh, I approached you and I imagine it was a little bit weird at the beginning when you're like, who is this girl with all the fancy vaginas and fancy colors? <laughs> Because if you check the website, I was a little cool. skeptical. Yeah, I, I was imagine. like, "Who is this?" And I like couldn't find much on you, particularly mm -hmm. because they like stalking all my guests mm -hmm. and stuff too. But your website was very well done. The program was really awesome as well, which we'll get into later. Um, but you know what? I am really. I also have an open mind, open ears as well. And I really think that sex workers can definitely benefit from this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. So I'm really excited to learn and just be a sponge on today's episode and just let you take the reins. But I guess maybe we'll start in the beginning and like we'd love to probably hear a little bit about your background and how you got into this position and like <laughs> – how you started your company? <laughs> it's it's funny. My background, that my story is really uh, I don't want to say unique, but it's really random because I I 
don't consider myself an overly sexy person at all. I'm very much a nerd. I wasn't having sex throughout high school. I wasn't having sex throughout college, nothing at all. Uh, I come from a quite conservative family as well. So the first actual conversation that I had with my mom was at the dinner table when she was like, well, what are you doing for a living right now? And I was like, well, I am making a sex course. <laughs> That's what's paying the bills right now. <laughs> and she was, at first she was quite shocked. But then when I showed her the course, she was like, oh, what do you think Bell, maybe dad and I could have? And I was like, oh God, mom, just don't. <laughs> I don't want to know what <laughs> that and you do in the bedroom, please. So, so especially because it's, the course is narrated by me. So that would have been really weird if she was training with my voice on how to train her vagina to do crazy things. Like that's that's not what I wanted to know about. It's not where we want to go. It's, but it's funny. All throughout high school, I was um, even though I wasn't really having sex, I was obsessed with sex. And this comes from a remember this teacher that we had when I was around thirteen, I think. Um, we had a sex education class and she was incredible. And the woman was like, a lot of you guys are having sex, but you haven't even masturbated yet. So you need to learn how to masturbate, learn how to please yourself before you have you have sex. Because at that point, we we're young girls and most of my friends were having sex just because their boyfriends were telling them that that was the next logical step. But they didn't really know much about it. And this teacher was like, go home, masturbate. So being the A A grade student that I was, I went home and I did my homework. And from that point on, it was just a one way road of no return. So from that point on, I just became obsessed with sex and I was just researching stuff. And like, I was like, once I get to have sex, once I finally have sex, I'm going to be amazing at it because I was just like an a type just wanted to be competitive just wanted to be great so it was very yeah. much from that perspective that i first heard about pompoir about even kegel training um but mm. if you tried looking uh, you know looking up the subject uh there's not a lot of information out there about the actual practice there were a lot of articles on you know the mysterious you know mystical practice of pompoir and how women in the east are doing these techniques but nothing step by step and like i was a nerd i needed the step by step how to do this and i was just not being able to find it um but i was learning about blowjob te techniques way before i even and gave up a blowjob. So I would use my friends as guinea pigs. I would tell them, hey guys, now you, you two are having sex. Go home, do this because I, I, I search online and this is what you're supposed to do. So they would go and they would come back and report back to me. It was just very, very nerdy, very dorky. That's hilarious. <laughs> so it's not the origin story. It's not the sexiest origin story at all. But that was, that's, that's, that's it. So then when I... When I actually started having sex and it was it was great, I loved it because at that point I had masturbated for over a decade, right? So so <laughs> so <laughs> it was great, but I was like, okay, now I'm ready. I really wanna, you know, I really wanna bring my A game. And when I started reading again about Pompoir, lo and behold, there was still not a lot of information out there, but there was this book about it. So I bought it. And I, I got it shipped to Argentina. I'm from Argentina. So I got it shipped here. I started reading about it, and there wasn't a lot of information like it felt like it was a, a translation of the book I tried contacting the author and nothing like I didn't understand anything there were no visuals I couldn't get it so I was like I don't know if language is a barrier here I didn't know so I went online I went to a forum and there were a lot of of girls who had the same problem they didn't get it didn't get it so we're like we're all just lost um but instead of like stopping there I am very, very stubborn. At the time I was working for a translations company and they allowed us to translate stuff for free. And I knew that there, there, there were some Thai forums where, you know, uh, sex workers were talking about this practice. So I went to some Thai websites. I, I looked up with like Google Translator a little bit about it. And I found out <laughs> the, all, the, all the posts that were about this practice. Yeah. So I went to my translations agency and I was like, at the end of the year, you can give them all the stuff that you want translated for free. And lo and behold, I was just translating a bunch of like sex for. <laughs> so with that information and a very, very understanding and wonderful boyfriend at the time, I was like, all right, I have all the information from these books. We are going to put together this program. So for like, you know, for, for at least three months, we were having really unsexy sex because it was just me practicing stuff. And it's like, do you feel this? Do you feel this in the shaft? Or do you feel this in the tip? Like, what, what are you feeling right now? Am I twisting? Am I, am I pulsing? What am I? And he was like, this is all great. No, no, I want specifics, baby. Like, come on. This is, this is, <laughs> this is business. We need, to, we need to learn this. So, so he likes to say he was the first product tester. Anyway, 
I we started <laughs> together this program, having all this this very uh, research based sex. And uh, I was starting to learn this exercises. I was starting to learn how to squeeze and contract and pulse and suck and milk and and tilt and twist. And it was just incredible. And so that's when I was, I mean, I was just happy to learn it, but he had a very entrepreneurial mind. And so he said, well, oh, this is something because you're, you're 23. Uh, but imagine how this could change the life of someone who's, you know, who's been married for 20 years and maybe hasn't had the best sex for the last five of those years. Or, you know, someone who's post-menopause or some women who've had a lot of, you know, a couple of babies. Like, imagine how that could help these people out. But I didn't know the first thing of how to reach out to those people. So what I thought of doing was going back to that forum of people who were confused about the Pompoir book. And I, you know, right. that forum was like eight years old at that time. So I just said, hey, guys, if anyone's still interested in this, I put together my program. I, I can train some of you online if you want. And one woman answered the day after. She was like, yes, yes, I'm a graphic designer from New York. Please teach me this because I don't, I'm not understanding this. So we started cool. getting on. Yeah, so that's how we kind of started. We started getting on Zoom calls one-on-one, -on -one, and I was just teaching her every exercise, and she loved it. She was in a, she was in a friends with benefits relationship uh, situation. Uh -huh. the time, and sex was yeah. kind of the thing that that she was a little bit um she didn't feel too confident in and now they're engaged right. like it's 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 been, it's, oh. been it's, it's it's fantastic that was my first case study which was <laughs> and so That's awesome. it was incredible but I was working full time there was no way I could keep teaching women how to do this so I taught my best friend how to do it and she was a lot more uh she she was she was having a lot more sex than I was having. And she was like, this is great. She was trying it out with different men. It was incredible. So she, um, she said, look, there's something here. Let's start training more women and women, you know, mm -hmm. dif different ages. And, and when I say women, I just want to preface this by saying, I'm going to say women, but I, I'm, I'm addressing anyone with a vagina and with a vulva, but I'm just going to say women for short. So we started training women who had had kids, women who were post-menopause, and we started realizing all the effects that this had on their pleasure. Because for us, these young <laughs> girls were like, I just want to be great at sex. But like these women were having a lot of benefits for themselves. Like my friend and I, we, we already really enjoyed uh, penetrative sex, but it was, it's not the case. We, all, we both know it's not the case for everyone. And that was the main thing. Like w these women were enjoying penetration sex for the first time. Most of them were having orgasms for the first time in this way. And that wow. just blew our minds. Um, so we were like, okay, so this has a lot of benefits for women as well. Um, and so we started mm -hmm. researching a little bit more about that. And pelvic floor training, actually, there, there are some studies backing this up. Like pelvic floor training does help women's libido, does help their, self, their sex self-efficacy, uh, their pleasure. Even, even in one study, um, I think it was 247 women that were, that were uh, looked in, in this study, uh, the strength of their pelvic floor was predictive of the frequency of their sexual activity. So women that who had stronger pelvic floors were having more sex. So I was like, okay, there are a lot of research. There's a lot of research, not a lot, because in women's health, there's never a lot. I, I wish it was more. But there was, there was some research backing this up. And I was like, okay, this is something. So we kept on training women for over a year one-on-one. -on -one, and every time that I would, I, I love designing, I love drawing. So I started drawing little vaginas to, to to sort of help understand some more complex exercises like pulsing and tilting and twisting and whipping. So I would just draw these vaginas and I would bring them to the calls. And every time I brought something visual, they were like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. That's when we were like visual. Right. So we're like, okay, maybe we can make something more productized that, that has more visuals, that has more imagery. Because all of these muscles are inside of us, right? So there's not, even if I made a course where I filmed myself, you wouldn't be able to see much because all the muscles are inside. <laughs> so I said, all right, yes. let's create a course that's um, very, I wanted to approach it in a way that was very uh, science-backed, but also... Um, I wanted it to be friendly for all women and all people with vaginas because I feel like when it comes to sex, either we don't have any information at all, or we have, uh, you know, or we have porn, and we we both know how porn 
changes the, pers- the perspective on sex and it's not always super real. Yes. So it's like, where yes, is exactly. exactly. So where's the material for the rest of us, right? Where is the stuff for people who just want to have better sex and enjoy sex more and be better at sex? Like, where is that for most of us, for all the nerds out there? <laughs> so it's like, all right, how do we something like this who a mother can do in her bedroom, this exercises, and the kid could walk in and the kid wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be bombarded by sex imagery, right? It's like, I want it right. to look very very friendly basically and so we animate mm-hmm. i designed the entire course uh completely wow. illustrations and i got wow oh my gosh it's i i there's a lot of illustrations too in the course all, it's all illustrations there's no real life imagery it's all illustrated um and i got my best friend who's a gay man to animate all the vaginas which is a funny story <laughs> on its own because every time i would give him an uh, you know every, every time i would give him a uh, a, a course or a new a new lesson or a new exercise he would come back to me with the perfect perfect animation of the vagina exactly what i was looking for and i was like pedro you've been lying to me you've had a vagina this whole time because you can't be this <laughs> accurate or you know a lot about vaginas or i don't know what's what's going on he was he's incredible he's one of my best friends it's amazing and so Aww. And so this the, the the course became this sort of really beautiful artistic thing. <laughs> um, oh, it doesn't great. really look like a sex course. It looks like a like like art. Really, it's very 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 pretty. Um, and it's very more most importantly, it's very practical because you get to see all the exercises and how they're performing, how they should they they will look like inside your body, right? Um, right. Sorry, that was a really long wind. <laughs> I told you no, that's okay. <laughs> I love it. No, that's really great. And and thanks for being super detailed about how you got into all this. And I can really just tell like your passion and your excitement about talking about this. And obviously with your baby, you started this company too. We'll definitely get more into like the course uh, details and fundamentals itself too. But going back to like Pompoir, like that specifically, um, I really wanted to hear about like the historical origins because they say it comes from the East. And I've also did a a bit a bunch of research too not a bunch but i did a little bit of light reading uh, on where that might have originated from and i want to say maybe it came from india or like mm-hmm. sri lanka around that area mm-hmm. but correct me if i'm wrong but I, i'd love to pay homage to that because i think you know knowing where something is coming from and addressing the history is super important so i love it i love that you did the research i love it and i wanted to um i want to give a very i I, I wish i could give a straight answer to it but still historians don't know exactly where the most what's been agreed upon is that it comes from india um and that it was practiced by the devadasi community so the devadasis um in different parts of india they're they're very different as, as as we both know india is a an incredibly diverse country. But certain Devadasis were women who married a temple instead of marrying a man. And part of their training um, was practicing sacred prostitution. So what they would do is, um, they part of their training was ple- pleasing the men who were worshippers of the temple. And it is believed that as part of that training, as part of that education, it came mastering the vaginal muscles to be able to perform all, all of these crazy techniques. So that's where we believe it, it comes from. I don't want to, I, I can't specifically. Yeah, you can't it. say it for sure. Exactly. Right, yeah. But it is believed that that's where it came from. And then it, it got ex- expanded into Thailand because as we know, they're much more open when it comes to sex work. Um, and as there's some rumors that uh, Willis, Sim- Wallace Simpson was able to do it, the woman who who uh, was able to get the the, the supposed the king of England to abdicate the throne for her. And there's so, so many rumors oh. about how amazing she was in bed and how she knew Pompoir and how she learned it in her time during her time in China. So wow. rumors back and forth. There are some rumors that Cleopatra knew how to do this because everyone in history was a simp for Cleopatra. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> well, maybe we don't know. We can't say. But yeah, it's um it wouldn't surprise me if it did come from India because their culture is so connected to their own bodies um, that it wouldn't absolutely wouldn't be surprising to me that that's, that's, that's the origin. So yeah, that might be the case. And I mean, like with like Indian potential or possible Indian roots, I know that there is a lot of relation with like tantric sex Mm. and we all know about the, the Kama Sutra. Is that related in any way to Pompoir or is that, is there a relationship with that or? So you can, we've heard, I, I actually didn't know about Tantra when I started the course. I actually started, I, 
I got introduced to Tantra by one of our students who is a big practitioner of tantric sex as well. And she kind of told me how she incorporated it into her own practice of tantric sex. Um, because tantric sex is very much focused on the slow sensations, sometimes pompoir can be, uh, can, it's, it's very much a, a big stimulator for the man as well. So usually you don't, you're, the man's not going to last, at least at the beginning, if you're doing this exercise. <laughs> so it's, it might not be primed for a really long session, I'll tell you that. But um, what the way that she used to incorporate it was she would, um, when they practiced still, still penetration, so they would, you know, he would be inside of her, but they wouldn't be moving. She would sometimes practice some of their pom her pompoir moves on him and, and, it's it's very much a meditative practice for a man to be able to like not come with <laughs> this stuff. Yeah, but it was it was part of their it was part of the ritual kind of. So yeah, a lot of women have been sort of incorporating into tantric practices, but it's not necessary. So you can really incorporate any type of sex that you that you like to have. Right, and then like on that topic too, like, and I know. Um, well, we, we're going to address this later on in the questions, but talking about like Kegels, um, but like for me, I don't know, maybe my understanding is incorrect. You can also correct me too, but like Kegels is not, there's no, the point of that isn't for sexual pleasure. Correct. Right. Correct. That's just for like tightening. Okay. Yeah. Arnold Kegels started tightening. for uh, incontinence to prevent incontinence and prolapse, uh, which is all, that's a default with Pompoir because I, I always say that Pompoir is fruit and kegels is strawberry so that's the way that i kind of approach it because really kegels is very much the tip of the iceberg of what your vagina can do and we can go into the specifics and into the science but uh the pelvic floor muscles and specifically the pubococcygeus muscle which is what you'll be working with when you're doing these exercises it's just like any other muscle so you you shorten it you lengthen it you stabilize with that muscle and you can do all sorts of movements depending on how you train it and then you have different um you have different components of training. You have speed and then you have endurance and you have power and you have mobility. So we're basically training this muscle throughout its range of motion in a lot of different uh, variety of ways. And so Kegels is one tiny component of it. You can think of Kegels as your basic contraction in Pompoir, what we call it, the contraction. But then that's that only works through what we call um, the horizontal plane of the vagina. So we, we talk about three planes of the vaginal canal. We talk about the horizontal plane that kind of divides the vagina into vertical levels. So you can consider maybe the first level as being the entrance of the vagina and the you know sixth level, depending on how you divide it, as near the cervix of the vagina. And so you have different levels going up. And that really helps with different techniques like whipping and, and contracting and milking and sucking. Then we have what we call the, the sagittal plane. This is getting really nerdy, but it's, it's really interesting. No, oh, I love it. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I told you I'm a dork. So then we have the, what we call the sagittal plane. So the sagittal plane divides the vagina in left and right. So that's when that's when it becomes uh, that's when it becomes a little bit more complex and we're we're we we're done with all the basic kegel stuff and we go into something that's you know a step further right so the sagittal right. plane divides the, vag the vaginal canal into left and right and being able to isolate those two halves uh, and move them independently and in different ways allows you to do movements like tilting twisting pulsing uh, whipping full squeezing a lot of different different components and then the, the last plane is what we call the frontal plane. And that divides the vagina into the front and the back. And that allows you mm -hmm. to create movements like locking, like um, rocking back and forth, rubbing, controlling. So we have a lot of different movements that come from isolating and understanding and being able to move the different planes of the vaginal canal. Um, and that's how you get to create all of this. We, we call over 27, we, we usually say over 27 different movements, but really people are coming up with new moves every time I, I, I talk to one of the students. So, <laughs> so it's just the, wow. the versatility of the vaginal canal is just insane. That's why I'm like, I'm so excited about it. And I, I get really excited about it because all the, because all the benefits that we've seen in women um, by not only naturally feeling penetration a lot more because they're obviously, they're, they're, they're a lot more sensitive down there, 
um, but by by also being able to create sort of their own orgasms. Because if you realize, if you really understand yourself and your vaginal canal, and you realize that rubbing the penis in a certain way makes you, you know, makes gives you more pleasure, and maybe locking it in some way, and maybe um, you know, squeezing it in, in in one part, you really get to create your own orgasm because you get to stimulate whichever part of your body is the most pleasurable with whichever part of your vagina is the most pleasurable so that's just yeah it's just really really exciting no totally and like i mean i think it's really cool because like you're really focusing on like the woman's pleasure um the way that you're talking about it and i think that's so nice because although the penis is also involved with this it's really refreshing to hear a different perspective that isn't focusing on male pleasure at the male orgasm because like everything in media and everything out there seems to be like for the man or for someone who holds a penis and it's just like it's really really cool to see that like it's really focused or it can be a focus to focus on like your own pleasure too so love that love that um, I really would love to hear and like kind of go into more details too about how it all works uh, as well. <laughs> like how how does it work and how do we train our bodies to do this? So really the first thing that I'd say is um, any any person with a vagina and a vulva can can do this. Um, and when I say any, I mean a lot of what what's been what's happened a lot is that a lot of women have approached us when they were ready to sort of do some vaginal tightening uh, surgery and stuff like that, which I have a lot of, I have a lot to say about that. But um, a lot of women have approached us with that concern. And I was like, well, let's try this first, because I think we have a lot more control over our bodies than we, than we sometimes think. And so what happens a lot is that as we age and as we, um, you know, if we get pregnant, et cetera, we might lose some of our collagen and, and elastin, but you never lose, you don't lose your muscle. You still have muscle layers in your skin. And if you train those, you're able to perform all of these motions. With that said, I always will say that someone, before anyone starts training any sort of pelvic floor training, whether you want to, you know, learn pompoir or you just want to do your basic Kegels, you should see a physician because some women will have what is called a hypertonic pelvic floor. So we naturally hold a lot of tension in our pelvic floor. It's kind of like our jaw. Some people will hold naturally a lot of tension there. So and, and even when we orgasm, we have a lot of un- involuntary contractions when we're orgasming on that pelvic floor. And if that's not relaxed, you can over time, you know, put a lot of pressure in it. So we want to see a physician to make sure that this type of training is good for you, because if you already have a tight pelvic floor, you don't want to add more training to that. You want to learn how to relax it first. But Considering that you don't, that you're good, and that your you know your physician gives you the, the the go ahead to start training your pelvic floor, then you're good. You can start training and you can start doing all of these moves. Um, so the way that I would start before you would dive into the more uh, complex exercises and the the sagittal plane and the frontal plane is I would start with your basic kegels. The problem is that a lot of people don't know how to do the basic kegel. And I think there was a study on this then when women were approached to, to do the basic kegel, they were actually pushing out. They weren't lifting their pelvic floor muscles. So that's oh. another reason why I think uh, women should go see a physician. And in fact, we're supposed to, as women, see a, phys- a pelvic floor physician once a year, which no, <laughs> we don't do it all the time. I did not know that. Yeah, we're supposed to do that. And oh. so they can teach you how to do a proper kegel. Um, but it's a movement of lifting up your pelvic floor, not pushing out. So it's almost like as if you were holding in your pee and you, you really needed to hold, you're lifting up your muscles. And that's the basic Kegel. But a lot of that's what's important here is also to align it with your breathing because you want to be breathing in a way that supports your overall health. So we talk about when we talk about the core, we also are incorporating the diaphragm that's the thoracic the thoracic diaphragm that's hold that's underneath our um our lungs. So what you want to be doing is if you are contracting your pelvic floor as you're inhaling, you're putting a lot of pressure on your pelvic floor and over your pubococcygeus muscles. So you don't want to do that. A lot of people will hold their breaths or they will inhale as they contract. And that's the opposite of what you want to be doing because you put a lot of pressure on your pelvic floor and you never want to do that. So you want to get the breathing right first. So what you want to do is you want to inhale and as you exhale, you want to be contracting. And then as you inhale again, you want to be relaxing. So 
once you got that sort of rhythm going, which can be a little counterintuitive at first, once you got that rhythm going, you can start training. And I would say start with your basic Kegels, start doing, but start doing them in a way that they're, um, that you're training for variety. So you want to be training speed. You want to be able to do Kegels fast, uh, you know, contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing in different rhythms. A lot of people like to put on songs and maybe imitate the different beats of a song that's fast and <laughs> slower, et cetera. So you want to be, that's hard. A, lot of, a lot of our students are like, I just put some The weekend and I just start, start contracting away. I'm like, yeah, let's do your thing, girl. That's, that's perfect. So that, that's, that's one way to, you know, do different beats, probably not the weekend all the time because the weekend has some slow songs. So you want to slow mix song. it up. Yeah. Something faster. <laughs> um, <laughs> freaking love them. So, so we want to be doing it in different speeds because then we want to obviously translate this into sex, right? So you want to be doing this in different speeds. You also want to be doing it for different lengths and durations. You want to be training endurance. So you want to inhale, and as you exhale, you want to contract up, and you want to be able to hold that contraction. And as you hold that, you want to be breathing in and out normally through your nose. So the idea, try for, you know, aim for doing 10 seconds of that contraction. And if you're able to do 10 seconds, aim for 20. And if you're able to do 20, aim for 30, and don't go longer than that. But a lot of women will say, yeah, I can, you know, I can hold for 30 seconds. But then when I tell them to, you know, put their fingers in and see, inside of them and see if they're actually contracting, they lost their contraction by second 10. So really you want to be focused on, you know, really contracting and really holding a strong contraction. Doesn't matter if you can only hold it for 10 seconds. As you train, you will progress in this. So that's the second thing you want to train for uh, endurance and for the duration of your contractions. The third thing that you want to do is you want to be training uh, versatility. So what this means is you want to be able to do these contractions in different positions. And you probably guess it is in the positions that you usually adopt during sex. So you want to be training these contractions in all, on all fours. You want to be training them standing up. You want to be training them on your knees. You want to be training them laying back. And, you know, if you're, if you're less vanilla than that, you can train them on any position that you, that you want. <laughs> you to be able to perform them in different positions, right? And then right. the, the the sort of the next step towards that would be using your fingers to really gauge your progress and understand where you're at with your strength. Obviously, a physician will be able to to. There's actually a perfect vagina test. I, I don't like the name, but that that's the name that it has. And it, the, the the physician is able to tell you, you know, to tell your power, um, your endurance, your um, your response, and say, and it's a, a bunch of it's, a, it's an acronym that I don't really remember right now, but it. It teaches you, well, he's able to tell how fast you're able to do contractions, how long you can hold them for, the power of your contractions, and they'll be able to tell you exactly where you're at. So mm-hmm. the next transition to that would be, okay, let's start performing more complex exercises. By this point, if you've been training this for two weeks, and I would say don't aim for more than 10 to 20 minutes of training. Um, another thing that I would add to this is, after those 10 or 20 minutes of training on, you know, these long contractions, these short, speedy contractions, um, and these versatile contractions, I'd say take five to 10 minutes to properly relax your pelvic floor. And we call this reverse kegeling. You want to really relax and feel feel yourself open up like a flower. It's almost like you relax all your oh. muscles. You, can stre- you, you should be able to stretch your pelvic floor by adopting certain positions like the yogi squat, the sphinx, right. um, the happy baby pose. You really want to stretch out the pelvic floor and make sure that you're not contracting anymore. You're fully, fully relaxed. Okay. And after a couple of weeks of doing this, uh, you should be able to feel, you know, you should be able to feel a difference, especially in sex. You should be able to feel, you know, penetration getting a lot, you know, you're feeling a lot more as if did my partner suddenly grow an inch or I don't know what, what's happening. <laughs> no, no, it's not that sensation. It's like, are you, are you getting girthier, baby? I don't know what's, what's going on. So it kind of feels like that. So you feel a lot more sensitive. Um, and, right. this, yeah. Yeah. and then the way that you kind of move on from that is, okay, so what are some sex specific exercises? And one very specific that I think is really easy to master for beginners is the milking technique, which is basically um, shows you how to uh, perform the contraction throughout the whole range of motion of the vaginal canal. So you want to inhale 
And as you exhale, you want to imagine that your vagina is divided into 10 vertical levels. And you want to imagine that you've placed a marble at the very entrance of the vagina. And as you exhale, you're showing it, you're showing the marble off. You're showing her off through each level of the vaginal canal as if it were an elevator. So you're taking her from level one at the entrance all the way up slowly until the, the cervix. So really slow contraction. You want to feel each level. Then you want to hold that contraction for about three seconds, no more than that. And then slowly, as you inhale, you want to release that contraction out and then open up. So what this does is it makes you understand and, 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 and really come, really be able to isolate the different vertical levels of the, the plane that we spoke about. So the way, that right. you, the way that this works later on is as you understand what each level feels like, you're then going to be able to isolate a lot more. So what this exercise really does is training for mobility so you train through the right. entire range of motion of the vaginal canal and then how this translates into sex is what you want to be doing is as your partner penetrates you whether it's a woman with with her fingers or a man what you want to be doing is you want to contract as he leaves your body or as she leaves your body and you want to relax and open up as they enter your body it might it, it feels a little counterintuitive oh. at first but what happens is when you relax and you open up you kind of create this resistance it's almost like this wall which makes it really really pressurable when someone's entering in and then when you and your patron your patron subscribers are going to love this 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 hand movements that I'm this very italian head <laughs> motions that I'm doing <laughs> and then when they leave your body you're contracting so you're almost not allowing them to let go of you so you can imagine just mm. psychologically what this does to a man but like it, it, it just sensation <laughs> wise it's very pleasurable for the woman it's it's almost as if you're holding into to whatever's penetrating you as, as much as you can and you can obviously perform this with a with a vibrator or, or a dill or whatever you have um but Ooh, the most yeah, yeah. very very pleasurable and understanding this technique um this is great because the first time i started doing this i i never liked the woman on top position and then when i started doing this i was like oh this might be one of my favorites now because it was really easy to start <laughs> perform there then i started doing it over position, right. of course but um what happens a lot to us to to our students is that they start enjoying positions that first they didn't care too much about so just because of how they combine different pompoir motions with 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 those positions um but yeah sorry this was very 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 long with it again but um my no, mind. it's. I love the details. We should detail. So. <laughs> this, we should this, listen. appreciate it too. I think this this first uh, this milking technique is really your your initiator. It's kind of like your your rite of passage before you begin pompar. But that's something that I think your your audience can get can can go home with and can can sort of start practicing. Um, and then totally. you know then you can move it a step forward and then go into squeezing and whipping etc. But this is very, I think yeah. this is enough to, to, for beginners to understand. I think it's really very, very pleasurable. Um, so oh yeah. my gosh. Well, this, I mean, the descriptions were already so amazing and I may or may not have been doing Kegels. It's almost not the yes. entire time, but like, <laughs> I was like, like, I'm like I'm really yes, really. yes, you're not the first person that <laughs> tells me this stuff. I love that. <laughs> I love that I ignite that in people. <laughs> <laughs> that's great well it's really interesting too could be so it's like yes you have to have this proper technique and you got to get the basics down you have to have, have to have the foundation down before you start embarking into other more challenging things as well but like i mean with the the amount of detail that you're using to explain just it just demonstrates how much knowledge and, and how much passion you have about this and like just how important this might mean to you um and also for like a lot of people's like sex lives too like this is it just sounds awesome and i really need to get back onto that course <laughs> i'm a, I, I, I I really love this. To I'm a total dork for pump you're already a sex goddess so it's it's not really you're you're you're, you're gonna you're gonna pick it up <laughs> extremely fast but i i just love i especially love helping women who who for whom sex hasn't been the most pleasurable or a lot of women that we help, they come, they come to us for lack of libidos, like a lower libido. And they're like, I, 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 I used to want sex and crave sex a lot. And I'm like, Oh, don't worry. This is going to be great. Because as you start training, especially <laughs> some moves like squeezing and, and whipping, as you start training, you start stimulating yourself. So it's like, I always tell my students, like, 
just make sure that you have some time after your practice because it might happen that in the morning when you practice you're then gonna get real horny so you're gonna want to <laughs> yeah you want to you're gonna want to touch yourself after this so just make sure that, <laughs> that 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 you have enough time and you don't have to get to work right away <laughs> Because I leave some ample time. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So that's uh, I I love this. It's just I just wish there was honestly I wish there was more more research out there for this, and hopefully it will be as as we open up the conversation because we just keep mm-hmm. finding more benefits to this practice and to understanding ourselves and to understanding our own bodies. So I just yeah, I'm I'm a total dork for this stuff. <laughs> No, I love it. And you you went over some of the, the benefits earlier on too, and it all sounds amazing, but also like, are, are there any risks at all? Is there any like physical risks, safety hazards to practicing pompoir? I mean, I know you said earlier and you kind of was like, oh yeah, like just make sure you always check in with your physician before administering any of these techniques first, but are there any risks involved and when it comes to pompoir, so the biggest risk will be overtraining, definitely, and and, mm-hmm. and 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 putting too much pressure on your pelvic floor. And there are a few things that you want to do to that you want to you know be performing to avoid this. Um, the first one is yeah, making sure that you're breathing in a way that uh, supports your overall health and and aligns with your diaphragm, because we have a pelvic floor diaphragm and we have then the thoracic diaphragm. We want them to be moving accordingly. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is taking proper rest. So we never ask our, our students to train for more than 20 minutes a day, five days a week. And then we also ask them to take one week off for each month where they completely relax oh. and they don't train at all whatsoever. Generally, if you still have a period, it's your period week. Um, if you're not, you can mm-hmm. take any week because also your pelvic floor muscles are actually stronger depending on your on the time of your cycle. So you will find that um, after your period, it kind of it kind of slowly ramps up the strength and, and, and then it becomes really, really strong. But then as you approach your period and during your period, your muscles are going to get weaker. So generally you want to take that week off anyway. Um, so you can see a lot of progress after that, 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 that this week. Um, so proper rest is important. Um, breathing is important. And then stretching is extremely important, I would say. So stretching and making sure that you're always relaxing your pelvic floor after each practice is crucial. Like it's, it, yeah, train hard and stretch harder. Like it's really, really important that you're always relaxed and there's no tension. You're not adding any tension there because it's obviously a very sensitive area. And yeah, the fourth thing I would say is before you start your training and maybe in the middle of your training, maybe three months in, you go and you check with your physician that everything is is fine and it's perfect. Um, you shouldn't feel any discomfort. If you do feel any discomfort, that's when you want to maybe take a rest. And then if you could, if that problem persists, go and check with your physician. But it shouldn't be a problem because it's not a high volume of training and we're not adding any weight and anything like that. So it should be fine. Right. But yeah. Cool. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Cause I was, want, I'm always interested in any kind of like, you know, safety hazards and whatnot. They don't like so many people just kind of jump into things that yes. like yes. doing yes. full research and all this stuff too. But um, I mean, you, you've really graciously talked to us and given us a sneak preview about some things that you can expect, but I'd love for you to maybe take this time to like talk about the Olympus program, we can find on goddess.com, um, your website, your company, and the course that you do um, to offer. So yeah, can you give us a little snapshot or a little preview of what we can expect in the course? Of course. And then first of all, I want to say that we have a free guide if you want to get started on this. If you go to goddess.com slash free guide, you can get access to a free PDF where I start telling you a little bit more about this and how to get started just to make sure that this is for you. You're enjoying this and you really want to do the investment of getting the course. Um, The course is a one-time payment. It's a six module course and it's fully animated. And we teach, we walk you through every technique from squeezing to side isolations, to whipping to everything. So it's just, it's, I, I love it. I think you're going to love it. And I wanted to give your audience also, ah, if you don't have the only thing I will say, the only caveat is that um, I still have troubles with my V's and my B's. So if you hear me say vagina instead of vagina, it's, you know, I'm not a native English speaker. So, so <laughs> that's the only thing you might, you might hear. But I put on my sexy voice. I'm like, and the vagina. I, I put on my, 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 um, my Sofia Vergara voice. That's <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Spanish is my first language, guys. You be 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 gentle with me. But um, 
but I walk you through everything. <laughs> you won't see any, uh, in, any, you know, any real life imagery. It's all animated, all illustrated, all safe for work. Well, probably you don't want to do it at work, but like it's all safe for <laughs> if you were wanting to do it at work. I'm not saying you should. Um, but yeah, and you also get access to me right now. So right now, um, because it's a, it's a community and it's a very tight community, you can get access to me. If you have any trouble with any exercise, you can book a call with me or my team and we'll help you out figure this out you also get access to the community for life and everyone's like helping each other out and they're like oh i got this when i learned this and this visual helped me etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's it's really great I, I i love our students they keep the they give me a lot of work because they're like oh i figured this out oh and i should do a lesson on this so i just i just want to keep producing and creating content because they figure out a lot of new stuff so like in the course mm-hmm. you'll see in one of the modules is how to pair each exercise that you learn with a different sex position because some exercise we run a study and some exercises pair better with pair better as if I was like drinking wine and eating <laughs> biscuits. So like <laughs> they pair better with certain sex positions. So anyway, I'm, uh. a, I'm a pompoir sex connoisseur. So that's that's <laughs> that's uh we explain to you in which positions you want to apply this in each moment of sex, when you're doing slower sex, when you're doing faster, when you're on top, when you're at the bottom. And all our students keep coming up with new techniques and new ideas. And it's just, it's just incredible. I love it. So, and no. finally, I want to give your audience a special discount. So if you use the code, do you want to use stripped? Is that, is that, a, is that a nice yeah. code? So if you use the code, yeah, strip, it's easy. <laughs> love it. If you use the code strip at checkout, you will get a hundred dollars off the course. Uh, so yeah, it's a one-time purchase. You don't get subscribed to anything. It's just one time and that's it. And you just get to, to interact with me and, and, and hear me be very dorky about Pompar. <laughs> <laughs> that's- no, I think it's really great because like, of course, I'm really picky choosy about who I bring onto the podcast mm-hmm. and never want to sound like this is very salesy, but Bella, you were super gracious to like give me access to the course so I could actually see and try it out for myself. And the course is awesome, guys. And I'm not even saying this because I actually build online courses in my vanilla work as well. Like I, I, I build courses just like this, not on pompoirs, not as exciting as that, but the animations, the narration, the detail, um, the step-by-step is very, very detailed and really great for any kind of beginner or wherever you're at. Um, so I definitely would recommend checking this out. Um, again, I I don't like any kind of salesy things, but this is something I feel it can help other sex workers in our community. Also help your sex life. Also help um, maybe better cam shows as well, Ooh. helping you with a client. So Wow. Yeah, there's lots of different options here. So I don't know. I think it's really interesting. Or maybe I'm just being a nerd and I think it's interesting. But this is my show. So this is what's happening. <laughs> I love it. I didn't even think of that. Like, yeah, for, for cam girls, that would be really interesting. Because once you start using a dildo, you can you can show off how you can move it and how you can, you can direct it. And how, ooh. Yeah. Wow, that just came to mind when you were explaining t- to me on the show too. I was like, wait a minute, like, because yeah, like I'm just gonna start uh, again embarking on my next chapter of camming. Yeah. Um, basically, yeah. When this episode's released, it'll be starting to cam. We'll see how long that lasts, but uh, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, it's it's really cool. The opportunities are pretty much endless, and you all know there's so much creativity that comes with cam shows. And I feel like a technique like this can be really valuable in your show and helping you stand out too so that's insane yeah <laughs> in thailand they have this show sorry i just complete digress but like in thailand <laughs> they have this shows where like as i understand women are able to like throw darts with their vaginas by having all of this oh, control yeah. with their muscles which i'm like well you can definitely do that but i never thought of darts yeah. specifically. <laughs> There's a lot of those and like, I mean, popularly known as ping pong shows, mm-hmm. a little bit controversial, mm-hmm. but I mean, that's probably a technique that they might have learned from this uh, pompoir or others known as like the Singapore grip. Mm-hmm. I think I've heard that. Kibasa, the I Singapore grip. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. You're your yeah that's that's perfect. Perfect. It's interesting. So people check it out. All these links, the free PDF is in the show notes as well as the code. Um it will be available there, but um, I'm not letting you go just yet. <laughs> you still got a few questions that came in from the audience, and these all came from Twitter. So I think it's probably time for us to go into that section of the show. So let's get into it. Let me pull this up. So uh, the first one is, how long does it take to master a pompoir? So I'm going to be very annoying and say it depends, but 
I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go a little bit more into that. So if you have no uh, sort of Kegel training or you've never done any sort of pelvic floor training, I'd say in three months you will get the basics and in six months you get everything. So generally six months is the most that it should take you to be able to learn even even twisting, I'd say, even light twisting. Twisting is definitely the most complex technique to master. Um, and then mm-hmm. and then usually at six months, people are people become start doing even more complex techniques. So we are we're working on a different course, which is even more advanced. So like so wow. one exercise that I wanted to tell you about, which is ringing. So you're able to twist with the top of your vagina to one side and with the bottom to the other side as if you were ringing a towel. Correct. Yeah. So that's what? Yeah, I know. It's a, oh I'm telling you that I'm telling you. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's wild. It's wild. So so I would say six months to get all the techniques that we explain that we explain on the course. If you have no any sort of pelvic floor training before, if you have done any sort of kegels before, you can get them in three months because it's it's usually usually it's very intuitive once you start training diligently every day. It's very very intuitive, and if you follow all the recommendations and if you follow the rest time and if you follow um, the amount of time, the stretching. So yeah, you can absolutely get it in less than that. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you're doing all your homework, it's you're doing all your homework. Right yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, the second question, I know we've probably discussed a lot of this too, but maybe a quick spark notes version of, uh, for this answer, but how can one learn this technique? So, uh, you can go into the free guide if you want. I have all the beginner exercises there. I have also some, I did some guest posts for Mystery Vibe as well, where I explain how to get started on the schedule. And you can also find it on the on our blog. If you go to, uh, I think it's goddess.com slash blog, you will find the one-on-one guide to Pompoir. And I give you some exercises to get started. So you have the free guide, the blogs, a guest post that I did. And if you go back to this episode, I would say you can you can start with the short contractions with the long contractions and with the milking technique and the versatile contractions. And if you start with that, you should get started with, with, with the most, you should get started making your muscles a lot stronger. So you have a baseline of strength so that then you can move on to more complex techniques. Love that. Perfect. And the last question here is a great question as well. So um, how can we do this without, uh, oh, let me start again. How can we do this without over tightening the pelvic floor muscles? And this person also writes, uh, sort of like how doing Kegels too much slash incorrectly uh, can lead to pelvic floor issues. Mm-hmm. Great question. I love that question. Yeah. So I would say, first of all, if that's a concern for you, first thing you want to do is go and talk to a physician and have them figure out if pelvic floor training, any sort of pelvic floor training is good for you. Sometimes physicians will even have to manually relax your muscles before you can start any sort of training like this. And, or they will give you a schedule to follow, et cetera, et cetera. We also have in the course what is called a ramp up period. So you don't start right away with everything. You start with some exercise, the first, the first sort of pillar of the course, which is strength. You start with that, then you add control and then you add direction. And the, the, way, the reason why it's scheduled like that is so that you can slowly get your muscles accustomed to this. Also with this training, the volume of training is not a lot. And then we always urge you to stretch and to connect with your breathing, et cetera, this, the stuff that we spoke about earlier. So it should, be, it should be fine. You shouldn't feel any sort of discomfort. And as soon as you do, I would say, first of all, re- take a rest. And if that problem persists, you should definitely go and talk to your physician because it shouldn't be because of the amount of training. Um, some people want to train as they have uh, like Kegel weights and tools inside of them. I usually recommend just training with you and using your fingers as as the best tool, your best friend for this. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you all the listeners for submitting these great questions. Super great. Um, but Belle, before we let you go, where can we find you? I'm 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 hard to find. I have I have the goddess Instagram. I don't do a lot of social media, although we are starting a YouTube channel. So the way that you can find oh, us on okay. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start that as a project for 2023. I really want to get this out there. Nice. Um so you can find us at goddess.com slash blog. That's where you can find most of it's it's all me writing, so you will find my my really annoying dorky dorky style there. Um <laughs> so you will find me there, you will find me soon on YouTube, hopefully, and on Instagram where go. Uh, G-O-H dot D-D-E-S-S. So goddess with the, with the H. Um, and that's, and that's it. And at goddess.com with an H after the O, that's where you can, where you can find us. 
Well, nice and easy though. I mean, <laughs> you're one of the few guests that doesn't have like oh, 10 zero. different I have zero. <laughs> Nothing. I'm, I'm bad at social media. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. Good for you though. Good for you. It's a very big time waster and it is a lot of work. So <laughs> I think that's it. I think I'm just too lazy for social media. That's that. <laughs> I'm too lazy, but I have to be on it. So it's like, ugh. but anyways, <laughs> everyone else, everyone else listening at home, it's stripped by Sia on all podcast platforms. So wherever you stream, wherever you're listening, um, it is available pretty much everywhere. Um, I would love and appreciate five stars on uh, what is it? Spotify. Also on Apple, maybe write in me a nice little review. If you're enjoying the content, it is free content every single week. And uh, if you wanted to get in touch with me directly, feel free to reach out. I always answer all the messages. Um, I am available pretty much, yeah, really actively on Twitter. So stripped by Sia as well as on Instagram. Also active there as, as well. Same handle. Um, check out the website, www.strippedbysia.com, which should be up and running. If you are wanting to be a guest or if you have feedback for me, things to say, good or bad, I want to read it all. And of course, if you want to help support the show financially, you can. Once again, it is patreon.com slash stripped by Sia to check out all the fun video content. And especially this episode, tons of really great gestures and just hand examples available there as well. <laughs> I'm, Italian. I'm Italian. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I mean, this conversation was super fun. I'm really glad I decided to bring you on the show. Thank you so much for this conversation and all of your amazing information. Super informative. Thank you so much, Belle, for joining us today. No, thank you for the platform that you're having and the change that you're having in the in the sex workers industry and the chemical industry. I think that's we need more people like you. That's that's yeah, that's my two cents, a hundred percent. So I'm really really glad that you're that you're out there doing all of this. It's, it's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I mean, for everyone else listening at home, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. It's new episodes every single Sunday. Don't forget to peep us next week, next Sunday at 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye. You're listening to Stripped by Sia, hosted, produced, and edited by Steph Sia. Music by Ted D. Graphic design by Maria Bellandarama. And photography by Ian Dabrin.